So in the Sicilian, even in the more gambit, my genius, are you there, my genius? If they don't take, the threat is really d5. So if they play e6, if they don't accept the gambit, right? This is the accepted gambit. If they don't accept the gambit, if they play e6, then we, we just take the space, just like big squeeze space and, uh, and wrestling, or just d5. We take the space, and now we, we have a huge advantage because this pawn restricts his whole queenside takes key squares. So you can see that white has an, has an advantage. Right? So that's the whole point of the Sicilian. The whole point of the Sicilian is to stop d4 and to take. If you have a guy who, you know, they, sometimes they do this, and then they play bishop g7, well now you play d5. Best move. Take the space. Okay? So you always want to take the space when you can't. And then, you know, you keep taking space. Kind of like that game you won with the squeeze uh, the other day. So after knight f3, a6, d4, e6, now we play d5. I mean, we don't wait. We don't wait. I mean, we could play c3, but we don't wait. We, we take the space immediately. Okay? That's important. All right, or we could play c3, but that's what we do. How you doing, Andrew? How you doing, man? Okay, now you did d5, which is even better now. And why is d5 even better now than a move before? Can you tell me? Why is d5 even better now than a move before? So the idea is that he wants to play his bishop to b7, and when you play, thanks, 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 Andrew. Andrew, you know, even when I was playing on the street, uh, I did some 24-hour sessions, you know, it's just real brutal, you know? So I appreciate you noticing that, you know, since we've known each other for years. Um, but yeah. The tennis too. If I didn't move around with the tennis, I just my body would fall apart. So I got to keep moving. Thank you, anonymous, for the cheer. So d5, and this restricts his bishop. See, so now if he takes, we take with the. Well, we can take with the pawn if we want. Um, if he plays knight c6, we can even go go like this with a huge attack. Look at this line, knight e5. Wow, look at that line. If he takes, we win the everything. If he takes with the queen, we take on f8. And then we win his queen. Right? So. But the point is take with the pawn. And now the bishop is, is, is dominated by our pawn. We just play c4. And now this bishop has no future. See? And so that's why it's even a bigger improvement with the bishop already committing to a diagonal that it has no future on, see? It's biting on granite, so to speak. And then we just bring our pieces out and we're the ones we're the ones with the with the uh, the better pieces. See? And this bishop eventually has to waste time to go back to c8 to have any life. Now you can do this, you don't even have to take, you just play b3. You don't have to get involved in taking and allowing all this this business with the bishop to get free, you just play b3. Play 92 now. Yeah, so it's the same concept in the Mora Gambit, and you'll see this in my book, but it's the same concept when we sacrifice a piece on d5. <clears throat> they. You know, be, must be timed up.
No. Uh. <clears throat> it's the same concept. And the idea is after bishop b7 castles b4 it looks like he's going to win this pawn but we actually sacrifice a whole piece knight d5 you can study this game my game with Sarkar. Um knight d5 e takes d5 and pawn takes so here we give up a whole piece to open up his king but also to dominate his bishop and his knight and his rook because the pieces can't play see so we give up a whole piece then of course we're threatening rookie one so if he does nothing then rookie one you see this pawn has a lust to expand right pawn has has a lust to expand right? okay so so that's the whole point of knight d5 is really to you know to wedge against the queen side and then it opens up the lines for the bishop and then it opens up the lines for the bishop and, and the king right against the king Okay, so same concept in your game, d5. Yeah, pawn takes is good. So you took with the pawn or the queen, but but both both are fine, as you can see. Queen takes is unique to this position because of the hanging rook and the tactics, but strategically, the move that's more consistent for the future and, and in most positions would be to gain the space in the play e takes d5, right? c4 knight c3 and all this okay so good i'm glad you did that i wouldn't have developed um that bishop yet because it might go to g5 you want to focus on getting your king side pieces out first so i would have played c4 and then bishop d3 or bishop d3 first and then c4 after knight f6 i would play c4 you could also castle because if he takes you win so we can't take this right but I would focus on getting the king side pieces out first. C4. Again, if he tries this business, just B3, solidify. This pawn chain is very strong. For example, castle. And you have a nice position on this. With the advantage, right? This bishop might go to B2, it might go to G5. So that's why, Matt Genius, we don't just commit to this bishop before before yeah d well d5 is nothing to review it's just it's just a positional squeeze uh you know i didn't know it when i played white cavix i didn't understand chess really then so so that's why i didn't play it but d5 is just basic uh space strategy taking space so that's why we don't commit the bishop yet because it might go to other places okay so Bishop f4, but you're still better because this you have so much space and this formation is just mocked because this is waste. You can't put his bishop on b7. Knight d2, again, this is not the natural square for the knight. You know, if you can avoid it, you kind of want to avoid moves and knights on e2 and d2 because it's, they're not as aggressively placed. Here we want to restrict the opponent's queenside counterplay. So we want to play c4 and then put the knight on c3, which is a much happier square where it's influencing matters in the center, you know? So that's why, yes, develop your pieces, but this is more of a closed position, so you don't have to, you can make another pawn move because your king's not in danger. You can play bishop e2 and castle. It's not like a wide open position. You could take strategic uh, concerns into consideration. So you can just play c4, taking over the space completely, c4, well after this, c4 and knight c3 with a dominating game. Okay, so now he doesn't capitalize, but now if we look at this position, you have to play c4, and what you've done is you've created a situation where your knight, where your knight is not placed in the proper situation. Basically, a, a strong player will play bishop b2 castles, and then that player will then play knight b1 to c3 to try and correct the position. Uh, we have a famous game where Fisher goes knight back to b1, uh, and 
you can take a look at this game. More advanced players. Um, Fisher versus. Um, yeah, it's a little different position, but he ended up going back to B1 to get a better square for the for the pieces. So you can take a look at that. Yeah. But that's a more advanced game. But that'll help more advanced players. But. But yeah, now you see that this is not uh, ideally placed. Okay, castle, good. Okay, good, but you don't need to do this yet. What's the next phase? You've gotten your pieces out. What's the next phase? What do you need to do next? So you move the same piece twice again before taking care of other considerations. First of all, I don't even need to let his bishop come back here, so I want to get my rooks into the game. I want to connect the rooks. So that's why a move like queen c2 is screaming to be played. Stops this bishop, queen c2, and it stops this bishop, and uh, Um, rookie one. Yeah, so queen c2, rookie one, see? And, you know, when he castles, you can also just play rookie one, rook e1, rook e1. All, every move is an advantage. More if you would do this, so you can play, like, with this other rook, maybe f4. But you can just do this. Threatening g4. Like, say he does this. You can take this because uh, see, he's threatening g4 and he's a powerful battery. So he has to give the bishop pair, and you have the light squares, and it's an easy position. Maybe double rooks, and he he needs to play get access to knight e5, but he doesn't have it. So it's just pain for him this position. He has no good moves. Rook e2. Had a similar game against against Benjamin. Take a look at this. Uh, and there's a YouTube video on it too. Uh, hippopotamus, happy hippo. Um, let's see. Yeah. Um, where I play rookie too. Alright. Okay. So 94, it's okay. Now, what a huge shift in the evaluation. So okay, does that surprise you? Yeah, so, okay, so, you know, Mad Genius, when you do this, you cut his, 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 his rooks from participating. I mean, if he plays bishop e7, you take, and now you have crushing tactics everywhere. Knight h4 is one. He can't take, you're threatening this. I mean, if king f7, you're just crushing him everywhere. Every which way. And mate. So... Um, so you want to get this move rookie one in, so it cuts the king. He has to play king f8, and now his rooks are out of play. And this is how, um, when you're learning, you could beat other um, intermediate players very quickly, beginning intermediate players, because, you know, they maybe don't develop properly, and you can get them, see you have an advantage in development, rook on e1, and he doesn't have his rooks in the game. Right, so. 
so it's totally uh, totally crushed see that and so let's see how it continues King f8 take take and you could just play Queen d3 I don't see how he's defending this we'll get to rookie rookie six yeah so rookie six is coming in all the lines so you see this is a sorrowful pawn Benoni pawn Benoni means son of my strength son of my sorrow it's so weak because it has no protection so he can't move he can't defend this if he plays here we just triple triple up right let's say rook a7 let's say he does I don't know this bishop d6 and it's over look at this power he never got his rooks into the game see and that's it mate right okay right 92 knight c4 94 right but you can go for it in other ways right centralized you could have gotten there just as fast with knight c3 94 but with knight c3, you're also restricting his queen side and you're doing other things. So knight c3 is always a more flexible move in general. Okay, well, you got this in. That's pretty good. He should have castled, of course. He should have castled. And then this would be winning again. Instead, he just gets crushed. Yeah, this is just hopeless. Take, take. Queen d3 is very good. I want to show you how bad his position is. That we could even play this brutal move. I, when I was playing in Boston a lot, I was the highest rated player by far in the tournament, so I keep myself sharp by looking to find the best ways to beat lower ranked players between 1600 and 2300. Many, many, many games, US rated. And I would look for these combinations in my games. And there's a lot you could learn from such finishing technique. I mean, look at this move. It's a beautiful move. He can't move anything. And now this. And now this. Now this. Pretty mate, by the way. So, I, I always try to finish these games against the weaker players in style and instead of just winning easily I wanted to keep myself sharp by so I would look for a move like rookie seven you know even though it's unnecessary so people would say it's gratuitous but it's looking for the truth so queen c2 and if this you did play queen c2 and if g5 yeah I mean you could play knight f5 if you want but I like queen g6 a lot uh, I mean of course queen g6 threatening mate I didn't even see it at Threaten's Mate, but, but, but this is very nice. Yeah, I mean, you can do this too. You can't move anything. I mean, and then pinned. And then pinned, right? So, it's just dreadful. But you see how easily you won this position. It takes Mate, right? So take. Now rookie seven, very good. This is brutal stuff. So this is a lot of improvement uh, very quickly, right? Ahsoka, I'm very impressed. I think he's gonna be he's gonna be good. Uh, he's, he's he's putting it together very fast. Uh, it's, it's 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 really good. Yeah, right. I mean, very good game, right? We're not just saying that. We don't just give empty compliments. I mean, this is really check. And now 95. Over key 8. Wow. Yeah, he's taking his time. This is really good. It's... Wow, over key 8 is beautiful. I, I was looking maybe 95. I don't know. 95 hang a piece? Yeah. But this is a beautiful move for key 8.
Again, it reminds me of my Benjamin game. I'll, I'm just gonna show it. I'll just show it. Handmade. I'll just show it. That's a great game starting out, Matt Jeans. But we talked about what needs to be improved, okay? And we talked about what needs to be improved, but that's a great game. Okay, this was uh, against US champion, ex US champion. And he, he didn't take over the center, so. Okay. Mm. So before I go, so E four, he 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 basically. He didn't, he wanted to avoid theory against me, so he, he knight f6 is more, more normal, so he played this hippopotamus threatening d5, okay. I went back, preserved the center, so d5, e5, we'll make this quick. And he just plays this opening with no space, which is easy for me to handle. Um, you know, he's a pretty well-known grandmaster. He, he, he was the chief grandmaster to, to help deep blue against Kasparo. This game was in 2010. Okay, bishop b7 castles. And d5, again, just take the space, Matt Genius, see? So this is this is the same example against, against a higher level opponent. d5, blocking this bishop. Now, what is the only move for, for, for black in this position? There's only one move. Well, what do you guys think it is? Let's see. If you guys can find it. What's the move? What's the only move? That's okay, you could share it. No, no, nothing like that. It's nothing, it's nothing tactical. It's nothing tactical. That would just lead you to be down a piece. I mean, 94, 94, you're a piece down. Whole piece down, but uh, the only one move is e5. And you have to block the, the position because you're too far behind the development. So you have to block the position. But he wanted to, to play with more, um, he wanted something more from the position, even though the position doesn't offer anything. So e5 is the right move, but then this bishop's mis mis misplaced, and okay, you know, he can, he can fight another day. But, but um, he played ED, which is a big mistake, because now, after ED, his, his king can't castle because I take on h6. And now the, the rooks can come quickly to the E file. So a6, rook e1, and he had to play king f8 because he can't castle. 
So he wants to play like this, but it's so slow. So King F8, and you can see the evaluation plummets. It's already it's already in trouble, and the computer's giving King F8. The evaluation's plummeting. Rook E2, King G8, Rook E1. I'm threatening. Bishop takes B6 now. Bishop B6 and Rook E7, so he played B5. And now Bishop F4 hitting the Knight. Knight f5, a3, restricting this. His bishop's still very bad. Queen e7, h3, threatening g4. Okay. h3, threatening g4. Right. So, the knight's trapped. So he has to play uh, h5, which is a huge concession. And now his kingside pieces are, are, are weakening. That's kingside squares around his king, so now king h7 is no longer an option. So I play the strong move knight e4. The idea that if take take bishop takes b2, we trap the bishop, and now when he takes here, we have a decisive attack with bishop g5. And you can see the evaluation is huge. Earlier computers didn't see it as, as winning that easily, but it's pretty obvious to an experienced player that after knight e4 he can't take this because because bishop f6. Then he's getting crushed. I didn't even calculate it. I mean, I knew it was winning. Any move is winning, but this is just... He can't do anything. His pieces are all destroyed. He's up two pawns, but... I mean, what's he going to do? Take this. And, you know... Exclaim. Bishop f6. Bishop f6, exclaim. Yeah, we dominate the bishop, you know. We just submit the bishop. Bishop f6, exclaim. And mate. Mate. Right? So, so this is just, uh, this is just crushed. Okay, so, so he went back, knight h7, and then I, I, I dominated this bishop again, c3. So now both bishops are, are banned, because they can't move, they both bite on granite. Okay, he played rook e8, and now I played a good move, knight fg5, threatening knight h7 and knight f6. So if he does nothing, then knight h7, and I pick up the rook with check, or I play check, picking up the rook. This is one of my better wins in my career. Okay, knight g5. Now... He has a dreadful position. He ended up playing f6. Now, I don't know how many of you have seen this game. So white to move and win. Now, of course, you can easily just play knight e6. It's not, it's not difficult. You could easily play knight e6 if you wanted to, and that's dominating. But white to move, what would you do in this position? What's the most crushing win? And, in the Morphe style. And, and he had about two minutes or less and I had 30. I had, this is, is an easy position to play for me. I found the combination pretty quickly. I'm proud of it. So, uh, so white to move and win. What would you do? What do you guys think? Anybody out there? Anybody watching? Anybody awake? What do you guys think? White to move and win. Yes, hobo dog. So knight c5. If he goes back, he loses, of course. So he has to play rook e2, queen e2. Knight f6, Matt Genius, he has knight f6, defending the rook. No, I'm not going to, I'll go when I need to sleep. I've been up many hours, so. Knight f6, knight f6, doesn't work, so knight c5. He has to play rook e2, hobo dog, then queen e2. And then if he moves his queen back, then, then queen e8, check, and this bishop is going to go. So knight c5, 
rook e2, queen e2, d c5. What then? d6 check. d6 check. Hitting the, the, the king, but then c4. Yeah, well, you would. 96 is fine. It's a good move, but it's not the best move. Okay, the, the best move, the, the most powerful move is knight c5. 96 is easy position, but but knight c5 finishes. You know, Ahsoka. You know, playing really great players. You don't want to give them a chance to get back in the game. You want to you want to crush them so they don't even have a chance to play. You you do need that. You 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 do need the best move sometimes because because um, you you don't want to let them hang around. You let them hang around, you'll be surprised sometimes. So, to, the attitude of not needing the best move sometimes can get you get you mocked. Okay, knight c5, rook e2, queen e2. If he goes back to c8, then um, then uh, then queen e8, of course. Why complicate things? Because um, because it's completely winning. That's why. And it wasn't complicated if you see it. Yeah, this is really bad for him. This one, sorry. Knight g6. Don't hang the knight. I'm tired. And now, yeah, this is just hopeless. Anyway, um. Oh, but that's your problem. You're playing 1600s. But, but, is that your plan to play 1600s forever? But eventually you're gonna play Masters, so. So it's going to be harder to win. You got to go for it sometimes. Knight c5, take, and d6 check. If he plays king f8, knight e6, king g8, knight takes c5, check. Winning the queen. So d6, c4, and I sacrifice a second piece. Bishop takes c4, queen takes c4, and again, if king f8, knight e6, he has king g8. Knight c5, he has queen f7, he hangs around. So here, in this position, after queen takes c4, king f8, he had no time and I played immediately. Well, similar to your game, Matt Genius is what it reminded me. I played rook e7 interfering. And it's a very similar, a very, very, very similar style actually. A rookie seven and he resigned very crushing defeat one of my one of my best games actually um, and that that's a US champion so just with the basic principles of developing all the pieces to the center um, and I won that was a short game okay so it's uh, that your game reminded me of it just from my experience so there you go thank you guys for that and let's uh, let's keep going.